Starting AMP from scratch is nice and all, but what if you already have a website? Here's how you convert it to AMP HTML. If you want to convert your existing site to AMP, you should first get familiar with the fundamental differences in AMP. It starts with the fact that you're not allowed to use any JavaScript on the page that isn't provided by AMP. In addition, you have to trim your CSS to 50 kilobytes, possibly remove a few disallowed properties and inline it into the page, plus substitute HTML media tags such as image and video for their AMP equivalents. For a better overview, check out episode 6, which dives into what's all the differences and limitations of AMP. I should also note that what I'm going to talk about next assumes that you have full control over how your pages are generated. If you're using a CMS, either apply these to your templates or create or extend a suitable plugin. I also won't go deeply into how to do many of the following things in practice. For the nitty-gritty details, dive into the attached guide in the description. Anyway, let's get started. First, inline and simplify your CSS. Chances are you're including CSS via one or many external style sheets. AMP only supports a single inline style sheet in the head of the page, so you'll have to merge whatever style sheets you have and inline them into the style AMP custom tag. If you've been using a single style sheet for all of your subpages and maybe a CSS framework like Bootstrap on top, you'll probably run into the 50 kilobyte size limit AMP enforces. The first step then is to replace your CSS framework with something tinier, like AMP start, or get rid of it entirely. Chances are you won't need a framework in most cases, not even to build complicated grids. Pure CSS grids are now supported in all modern browsers. Secondly, only load the CSS required for the current page, instead of a global file that includes everything. If the validator still complains about your CSS, it's probably because you have a few importance in there, or you're trying to animate stuff you really shouldn't, basically anything that isn't opacity and transform. Next, substitute media elements and iframes. When you're done with the CSS, you want to replace any HTML tags that AMP doesn't support. The most obvious ones are image, video, audio, and iframe. Luckily, all of these have substitutes for AMP that function almost exactly the same, and you can read all about them in the AMP docs. Next, find AMP components that replace third-party embeds and includes. If you have a content-heavy site, most of the JavaScript running on your pages is probably coming from third parties, like that analytics library you included, or that Twitter embed, or maybe even social share buttons. Every of the ones I just mentioned have suitable AMP replacements in form of components, and you can find a long list in the reference doc section on ampbojack.org. Now, in the unlikely event that some embed re that requires JavaScript isn't available as a component, your best bet is to isolate just that part of the page into its own non-AMP page that is then included via AMP iframe. Next, server-side render as much as you can. But how about the things on your pages that are dynamically initialized or generated via JavaScript, like charts, image galleries, or code blocks? Some of these also have equivalent AMP components, but another approach is to server-side render whatever is possible. As an example, I now server-side render the syntax-highlighted code blocks on my blog as opposed to doing it on page load via JavaScript. Not only does it play nice with AMP, it actually makes my page faster. Finally, convert interactions to CSS or AMP equivalents. You probably have quite a few interactions on your page. You know, like a sidebar that slides out, or a drop-down menu, or an image carousel. The good news is that most commonly used interactions have equivalents in AMP. There's AMP sidebar for a slide-out sidebar, or AMP accordion for accordions of all kinds, AMP carousel for carousels, and AMP lightbox for modals. And we've just launched AMP bind, a component that allows you to do stuff like, if you click this button, load this data into this part of the accordion. But if none of these fit your use case, think about whether you really need JavaScript in the first place. Drop-down menus can be purely done with CSS using hover pseudo-selectors, and even interactions that need to be toggled by click can be achieved by using the infamous checkbox hack. The CSS community is incredibly creative. Have a look at CodePen for some inspiration. And these are the broad strokes to go from HTML to AMP HTML. When in doubt, check out the numerous ways you can validate your pages and have a look at some of the automatic converters that the community has built for inspiration. As always, you'll find lots of links in the description and don't hesitate to reach out. Onwards.